Let's take a look at the most general trinomial we could think of in x. You know, that would have the form, if you were to write it out, as, well, coefficient times x squared plus coefficient times x plus just the, the constant term. So it might look something like this. Ax squared plus bx plus c, where this a, b, and c represent the coefficients in front of the unknown x, or in this case, the constant term. So the important thing to realize is that when a equals 1, actually factoring this is not so bad. And we've already seen how to think about that. But what about a systematic approach for when we actually have a coefficient in front of the x squared and a coefficient in front of the x and then a constant term? How can we try to factor that? Well, let me show you a systematic method that will hopefully pull all the ideas we've been thinking about together. Anyway, before we get to that, let's take a look at some quick examples to see if we can identify the a, the b, and the c. So let's start off sort of simply. Well, here I see there's an invisible 1 coefficient in front of the x squared, so the a here is 1. Now, what's the b? You might first think the b is 7, but remember that we're always running a plus sign here, so we have to view this as plus negative 7. So in fact, b here is negative 7, and c is negative 1. Cool. How about this one? Well, here I see the a is 3, the b is 2, and now the c is going to be negative 4. The negative sign goes to the constant. Here I see a is 5. Looks like there's nothing in front of the x, so you might guess 1, but that's wrong because of that, that minus sign. So I have to interpret the minus sign as plus negative 1. And so, in fact, b is negative 1 and c is 3. OK, great. Well, now armed with the fact that we know a, b, and c, we know our a, b, and c's, now let's see that we can factor trinomials in a systematic way. Let's check out this trinomial. That's right. You heard it here first. 8x squared plus 35x plus 12. And I want to factor that bad boy. So what do I do first? Well, the first thing I do is I see if there is a greatest common factor of 8 35, and 12 that's bigger than 1. And I see there isn't anything I can factor out. So I'm all set with that. And now what I have to do is I have to think of two numbers whose product is the product of 8 times 12, which is 96, and yet whose sum equals 35. So I've got to factor 96. So here's 96. And I want to sort of write the factor here, so factors. That's going to generate 96. And then I want to write down the sum of those factors. And I want to find a place where I see 96 here and the sum being 35. So let's just try some. So let's factor 96. So the first easiest one is 1 times 96. And if I add the two factors together, their sum is actually 97. That's a far cry from the 35 that I seek. So how about 2 times 48? Well, what if I add the 48 and the 2? If I add them together, you'll notice I get 50. That's a lot smaller than 97. So this is looking good because I'm trying to shoot down to 35. So I'm making progress, maybe. Notice that 3 divides 96, and so I can write this as 3 times something. In fact, 3 times 32. And what's 32 plus 3? Well, that's 35. Folks, we have a winner. We have a bingo right here. I found a product that yields 96, that's this product here, whose uh, sum of those two terms in the product produce 35. So this 3 and this uh, 32 are going to be the key to factoring this. Now here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick the 3 and 32, and notice that when I add them, I get 35. So here we go. I'm going to take that expression and write it out. 8x squared plus, but instead of writing 35, I'm going to write what write what we just found, 3 plus 32, x plus 12. So this is exactly the same as the original. 
I just broke this up in a special way. Well, now all I'm going to do is distribute the x, no problem, and let math take its course. 8x squared plus 3x plus 32x plus 12. So I just distributed that x across here. And now notice that the 8x squared and the 32x, they actually have a common factor. Do you see what I can factor out of that? I can factor out a lot. I can factor out an 8x. So what happens when I do that? I'm going to take this piece and this piece and factor out an 8x. When I do that, here I'm just left with an x alone. And here, what am I left with? Well, I'm left with just a 4. So these two pieces combine to give me this one. And what am I left with? Well, I'm left with this 3x plus 12. But notice they have a common factor of 3. So if I factor out the 3 from that, what I see here is just x plus 4. So that's this piece right here. Now this is factor by grouping, if you notice, because check it out. This piece right here, I've got a factor of x plus 4 and a factor of x plus 4. I can factor both of those common factors out of the whole thing. And if I do that, I see x plus 4 times the quantity 8x plus 3. And I've just factored this original trinomial. Now, maybe you don't believe me. Well, there's an easy way to see if I'm right. All we have to do is check by foiling out. So let's quickly foil out and see if we can actually verify that this is indeed the correct answer. So if we try to foil real fast, or as I call this in the business, fast foil. So some fast foil, x plus 4 times 8x plus 3. Here we go. Well, I have x times 8x. That equals 8x squared. And then the outside term produces a plus 3x. The inside terms produce a 32x. And then the last times the last is a plus 12. And when I combine the like terms in the middle, I see 8x squared plus 35x plus 12. And notice that perfectly corresponds to the original question. This checks. This, in fact, is the correct factorization for this. And we did that in a very systematic way. All right, you know what? Just for fun, let's try one more just together, just before anyone notices that we're still here. How about this one? 6x squared minus 3 x minus 45. All right, let's think about that together. First of all, I look at the a, b, and c term and see if they have a common factor other than 1. I see, in fact, they do. In fact, each one has a factor of 3. So I should first factor out that greatest common factor, which in this case is a 3. So I'm going to pull out that 3. And what am I left with? Well, I'm left with 2x squared minus x minus, and what would this be? This would be just 15. OK, so I'm going to hold that 3 factor way out. That's already taken care of. Now my goal is to take this inside thing in the red and try to factor it. How do I do that systematically? Well, what I have to do is I have to find two numbers whose sum is b, which is, in this case, negative 1, and yet whose product is this product, which you'll notice is negative 30. So let's go off on the side here and do a little side calculation. What I want to do here is take a look at negative 30 and factor it and then take the two terms of the factor and look at their sum. And so I want to factor negative 30 and I want to have a sum that's going to actually produce negative 1. Since I'm going to be adding these two numbers together and seeing a negative 1, I know that the larger number actually has to be a negative, have a negative sign in front of it. So I'll start with 1 comma, uh, 1 times negative 30. That produces negative 30 when you multiply them. When you add 1 and negative 30, I see negative 
29. I'm shooting for negative 1, by the way, so I've got a long way to go. All right, what about 2? Well, 2 is a factor, so I can write this as 2 times negative 15. And if I add these two numbers, I see negative 13. Making progress, but still a long way from negative 1. A 3 is a factor of negative 30, so I can write this as 3 times negative 10. When I combine these two numbers with, by adding, what I see here is negative 7. Hey, maybe I'm going to actually hit negative 1. Let's see. A 4 doesn't divide evenly into um, a negative 30, but 5 sure does. 5 times negative 6. And check it out. What's 5 plus negative 6? It's negative 1. We have a bingo. 5 and negative 6. That's the way I'm going to break up the number negative 1. I'm going to write it as 5 plus negative 6. Armed with this little insight, I rush back to my question. I'm going to put a little hold here. I'm going to use my hold symbol. Hold, 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 hold. Because I'm only going to focus on this piece right here. Don't forget, we have a 3 out in front. 2x squared plus. And instead of writing negative 1, I'm going to express that as 5 plus negative 6. So I have 5 plus negative 6x minus 15. Let's take a look. Uh, the x, by the way, here, that's, of course, a little typo. It should be all multiplied by x. If you made that mistake, good for you. That's a great classic mistake to make. But in fact, we shouldn't make it. And if I had a little whiteout, boy, I would have gotten rid of that. But let's see, maybe some whiteout will appear really soon. Anyway, until we wait for the whiteout, I'm going to keep going. What do I do next? Well, now what I do is I take this x and I distribute it. And when I distribute it, what I see now is 2x squared plus 5x minus 6x minus 15. OK, and now what can I do? I can notice that I've got some common factors here. Here I could factor out what? A 2x. So I've got a 2x. And when I factor that out, what am I left with? Here I'm just left with an x term. And here I'm left with a minus 3. So that represents the factorization of these two pieces. Now here there's a common factor. What can I factor out of there? Here I can actually factor out a 5. So if I pull out a 5 from the green, and you're saying, gee, Ed, it doesn't look very green. Well, now it does. Ha <laughs> ha! Try to fool me. If you factor out the 5, what I see here is x minus 3. And that's the green part. OK, cool. But now notice that we can now factor by grouping. Because I've got the quantity x minus 3 and the quantity x minus 3. They're a common factor. I could actually factor that out. And when I factor that out, what do I see? Well, I see x minus 3 times. And then here I'm left with a 2x plus 5. So that seems like, wow, we're done. That's it. We're finished. But remember, not quite, because the original question had this 3 out in front. So I've actually got to multiply this entire thing by that 3. So if I put 3 out in front of everything, and then write x, plus, x minus 3 times 2x plus 5, that represents the correct factorization of the original. And you can check if you want. First, you'd have to FOIL this out, and then don't forget to multiply all the way through by 3. Anyway, if you've got complicated trinomials, it turns out that even if the a term is not 1, there's a systematic way to factor them each and every time if they can be factored. Anyway, enjoy factory trinomials. A little bit tricky, but awful lot of fun. I'll see you soon.